Sarah, thank you so much for doing this interview. You're welcome. Happy to be here. Today's a big day for us all. We are so excited. We're yeah. so excited. We've announced our partnership today with NREM, Columbia University, and Target ALS. We're going to be making a big uh, impact for ALS patients who have uh, nano-rare versions of the disease. Can you tell me a little bit about how this came about, this partnership? Yeah, so NLORM Foundation is a nonprofit organization, and what we do is essentially c discover, develop, and offer um, individualized antisense oligonucleotides for patients for free for life. And the patients that we can help are patients that have nano rare mutations. Nano rare mutations are defined as individuals of a, a mutation that's prevalent only in one to 30 individuals worldwide. Mm -hmm. um, and part of the rationale for this is not only the regulatory environment, but also really from a commercial perspective. It's not viable, it's not realistic to um, think that every patient that has a unique mutation will really be able to have a commercial organization um, develop a drug for them. Sure. Now, I, what I really love about that is you know, uh, ALS is already an orphan disease. And we have 30,000 patients in the United States. Uh, we don't yet really have effective you know, treatments broadly uh, for patients, but we're leaving no stone unturned. And mm -hmm. does treats patients who, you know, from one to 30 people. I mean, talk about being so specific. I mm -hmm. think it speaks to your mission. Tell me a little bit about, I mean, your mission as an organization of sort of why that, why that focus? Why that yeah. focus on nano rare? Well, it's, it's all about hope, honestly. We've mm -hmm. met more patients and more families and ultimately, especially in you know disease areas like ALS, where there, you know, there's so many people. Like at, at Target ALS conference, it's amazing the number of people who are all focused on this group of people, wanting to help, wanting to create a cure. But within that population, there are individuals that can still feel isolated. Hey, I have a mutation. It's yeah. I'm the only one in the whole world. Mm -hmm. In the context of a community that may all be able to be treated with other potential therapies. Yeah. Um, so NLORM is finding that across the board. And we're really interested in helping patients that are in that space where they're isolated. They ultimately don't have other hope yeah. and we can help them. Yeah, okay. they're really as a hero yeah. for them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's funny, you, uh, you mentioned ASOs, which mm -hmm. is a it's one of the many buzzwords in ALS. Mm -hmm. Could you explain a little bit about what an ASO is so that those who are watching can understand sort of how you, you know, uh, how you go about do your uh, go about doing this uh, and uh, helping treat these patients? Yeah, so ASO is antisense oligonucleotide, mm -hmm. and so ultimately these are RNA targeted therapies that are very specific to each patient's mutation. Mm -hmm. And so ultimately we need to understand exactly what that patient's mutation is. Mm -hmm. We need to understand the variation around that mutation, mm -hmm. so that ultimately we can create an ASO that is you know, 18 to 20 bases long that can really pair with that RNA and have the modification and the potential outcome um, to benefit the patient. A lot of ways it's like a puzzle piece, mm -hmm. right? You kind of are replacing mm -hmm. one thing to to insert the solution uh, mm -hmm. like a puzzle. Yeah, absolutely. So as part of our partnership that we announced today, we're calling it uh, Silence ALS. Mm -hmm. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about the partnership of specifically uh, what will happen between uh, Columbia and NLRM? Yeah, so, you know, ultimately Neil Schneider, um, you know, has shared the, the really incredible story about the FUS ASO. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's really inspired us to want to, to broaden and to think across ALS patients. Mm -hmm. So even what we just mentioned is within the ALS community, there are going to be individual and unique mutations. Um, these may be affecting a handful of people, a dozen, or, a, you know, a single of maybe two people. Um, and ultimately what we need to do, and one of NLORM's core goals is, we're treating N of one patients. And so you can only learn so much from each N of one patient. So therefore our main goal really is to learn across. Mm -hmm. And so this partnership I think is so exciting because it's kind of a, a real time exemplar of our ability to learn across patients. Yeah. Um, and introduce efficiencies because ultimately we need to act more quickly. Yes. We're not quick enough. We need to have more urgency so we can apply the drug development of individualized ASOs, the urgency there, with yeah. the urgency of ALS patients, 
and have this really magical um, partnership together. Yeah, no, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. That you, you, your organization looks at it, at it from a very specific lens, and I would just ask to you, from an ALS perspective, large, you know, overall, what do you think about ALS research and where we are, and maybe what is missing, or uh, you know, anything that's sort of uh, stood out to you and where we are today in ALS research? Yeah, I mean, I think you know the ALS research is is amazingly evolved. I mean, I think for for myself, who is a geneticist, I've been in pharmaceutical drug development for rare diseases in general. I think it continues to be so impressive. Yeah. I think you know ultimately, and and I'm biased, of course, um, but I think where we need to get is is really manifesting all of this research into clinical outcomes. And you know, I think that's really what uh, what the goal is with with the partnership with Enlorum. Yeah. So you know, and not only to help individual patients, but what can we learn from yeah. each of these patients to then apply more broadly to the ALS community? Mm -hmm. um, because ultimately, we'll be targeting genes that are some very well studied, mm -hmm. you know, genes in this community. But we're doing it in a way that's slightly different and a little bit more unique and and more individualized than yeah. has been done before. And so ultimately, it's it's you know. It's up to us. It's our obligation, our privilege to be able to do this in a single individual, but then to you know provide this back to the community to be able to say, okay, here's what we learned. What can what else can we do for this patient community? Yeah, sure. It, it it feels like we're at a precipice in ALS research. We don't know what that precipice <laughs> is. I think. I mean, we're here at our, our annual meeting with hundreds of researchers trying to find that solution. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, hopefully, we will get there soon. I want to you know just congratulate you for all that the organization does. I think it's absolutely fantastic and I'm so glad that we have a chance to partner with you. I know that uh, it's going to be a terrific uh, partnership. Yeah, thank you, Steve. I'm equally as excited, so really just appreciate it. And the Target ALS conferences, I mean, I think I came in this morning like, wow, this is an amazing, amazing conference. So, oh, you. you know, even just to step in as, as someone who hasn't been a part of this community, just so excited and just appreciate the support and yeah. really grateful for Target ALS support. Thank you. So. Yeah, well, we've been lucky because we've grown over eight years. This event has grown and grown, and now that we're both in person and virtual, <laughs> it is almost unlimited. So we have that many more people we can, researchers, we can reach with our our education mm -hmm. and also in our resources too. So it's uh, yeah. you know really it's our goal for to target collaboration, acceleration, mm -hmm. and finding a solution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Thanks for your time. I yeah. really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Steve.